The Dragon is the best short answer. This is what Japanese aerospace agency JAXA, astronaut Soichi Noguchi explained during a press conference from aboard the space station. He said this comparing the experience to riding NASA's space shuttles and Russia's Soyuz spacecraft. But why and how is SpaceX Dragon doing that feat? This is the real reason astronauts prefer SpaceX Dragon over others, and Russia is shocked. Firstly, talking about space, safety is certainly the biggest concern for astronauts. Soyuz, the capsule claimed the life of the first astronaut to fly in it and was later involved in one of the worst accidents in spaceflight history. The basic design for Soyuz was established in 1962 by the Soviet rocket engineer Sergei Korolev. The craft was intended to become the spaceship that would carry Soviet cosmonauts to the moon. On November 28, 1966, an unmanned version was launched with the aim of carrying out a rendezvous with a second Soyuz to be launched the next day. However, the craft's systems fail within minutes of reaching orbit, and the mission was abandoned. A follow-up mission ended in disaster when the launcher exploded on the launch pad, killing one person. The Soviets pressed ahead, and in April of 1967, the first manned Soyuz was launched but crashed on re-entry when its decent capsule's parachute failed to open, killing its only crewman, Vladimir Komarov. Flights resumed 18 months later, and Soyuz eventually entered regular service, though by then the Soviets were lagging behind America in the race to the moon. Nevertheless, they were still able to come up with one startling mission using a version of Soyuz called Zond 5. Zond 5 flew in September 1968. After its success, cosmonaut Alexei Leonov pressed to follow immediately on a similar mission, to circle the moon and return to Earth, and so beat America, which was planning its own circumlunar mission, Apollo 8. And that was coming in December. Leonov was refused permission, and so America got to the moon first, though they did not land until Apollo 11 touched down on the lunar surface in July 1969, added Baker. At the end of the day, the Russians were just more cautious. After losing the race to the moon, Russia concentrated on Earth orbit missions and the construction of manned space stations. Soyuz became the workhorse for those missions, though it suffered one more tragic failure when three crew members on board Soyuz 11, Georgi Dopravalsky, Vitalis Volkov, and Viktor Patasev, were killed in 1971 when their capsule depressurized abruptly as they prepared to re-enter the atmosphere. They are the only deaths of humans to have occurred in space. All other spaceflight fatalities have happened inside the Earth's atmosphere. Since then, Soyuz has earned itself a reputation for safety and reliability, though its descent to Earth, said Sharman, remains a dramatic experience. The G-force is five times normal gravity. You can see part of the spaceship's outer shell, which starts to glow as it heats up and plunges into the atmosphere and bits start to burn off. That's when the parachute opens and you're jerked from side to side. It's a lumpy and bumpy ride. In terms of safety, Russia will certainly be embarrassed with Elon Musk's SpaceX. Since Crew Dragon's debut, SpaceX has flown more astronauts than anyone. In a little more than two years, SpaceX has surpassed the total number of astronauts launched into orbit by China, whose human spaceflight program goes back to 2003. And in the time Crew Dragon has been operational, it has exceeded even the Russian Soyuz vehicle in terms of the total number of people flown into space during that period. Over the last two years, Dragon has had a few flaws, including an intermittently problematic toilet and a lagging parachute on one flight. But NASA officials have been extremely pleased with the vehicle's performance. This is probably the safest vehicle astronauts have ever launched on, former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine says. It has safely returned the United States' capability of human spaceflight, which had been lost since a space shuttle retirement. Had Dragon not been available, NASA would have been in the uncomfortable position on relying on Russia. And that's for all crew transport amid the Ukraine war. Next, astronauts definitely care about the comfort of the spacecraft. The first time Musk unveiled the seven-seat Crew Dragon concept was at an event at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California back in May of 2014. Unlike the three parts called modules of the Soyuz, Crew Dragon just included two sections, the crew module and the trunk. The crew module is designed like the Apollo Command module that carried astronauts to the moon. 
The trunk has solar panels, heat removal radiators, space for cargo, and fins to provide stability during emergency aborts. Together, the capsule and trunk stand around 8.1 meters tall with a diameter of 4 meters, and that's a little bigger than Soyuz. As a result, astronauts have more space. A Soyuz has room for three people. Meanwhile, a Crew Dragon can seat up to seven, although NASA won't be using more than four seats at a time for the commercial crew program. After that, due to concerns about G-force on splashdown, SpaceX was required to change the angle of the seats. That meant they could no longer fit seven seats, and that caused them to reduce the number to four. Regardless, it still has more capacity than the Soyuz. It's much too small and tight, complained Dutch European Space Agency ESA astronaut Andre Coopers of the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. And finally, Russia can't deny that its spacecraft is now outdated. Meanwhile, Crew Dragon feels like a 21st century spaceship. One of the biggest features of the Dragon is the touchscreens inside. SpaceX designed them not to be just functional, but with user experience in mind. NASA's old Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules were very much designed with an airplane cockpit in mind. Those sheet metal instrument panels were studded with hundreds of switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges. Their simple onboard computers were controlled by a mechanical keyboard. The commander flew those ships the same way you'd fly a plane, with a control stick determining velocity, altitude, attitude, and direction. The Dragon's designer swept all of that away, replacing everything, including the control stick with three large touchscreens facing four side-by-side -side seats. Each screen is capable of calling up to as many as 10 sets of displays. That allows the crew to focus on a particular set of systems, guidance, environmental, electrical, and more. As Doug Hurley, the commander of the first crewed SpaceX mission which launched in May 2020 said, you have an overall systems page on the screen and then you can drill down into individual pages as well. There's a total of 25 to 30 individual pages and SpaceX may have added more since my flight. With any aircraft or spacecraft, you always iterate because it makes sense and it's easy and will help the crew. Ideally, the spacecraft helps the astronauts so much that they have virtually nothing to do with the ship operating entirely autonomously. And if the automation doesn't take care of a problem, then the ground is your next layer of defense, says Hurley, referencing SpaceX ground controllers who can problem solve and issue commands to the spacecraft from the comfort of mission control. Only if the Dragon fails to look after itself and if the ground staffers can't solve the problem would the astronauts then take over. That's the case too when it comes to the most critical aspect of commanding the spacecraft, flying it. The Dragon features a full-time autopilot program requiring no astronaut intervention. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.